Now, what have Elon Musk and BBC Scotland, indeed probably the whole BBC, got in common? Precious little you would have. Indeed, I read the BBC attacking Elon Musk for his controversial tweeting where he was saying that England was heading towards civil war. Well, I actually think they have got something in common. I think there are two cheeks of the same posterior. They are both organisations, whether they realise it or not, and whether they mean to or not, who've got a vested interest in the prolongation of trouble in the English streets. In the case of the BBC, quite blatantly, uh, what a desire or a wish, but a temptation perhaps would be the best expression of seeing it spread to Scotland. Elon Musk uh, you know, has a pecuniary motive. He's going to make mega bucks of being the, the centre of debate. So he baits Prime Minister Sir Keir Starmer by talking about a civil war and Starmer answers him back. Now, you know, I would have thought somebody who'd just been elected with a thumping majority might have a bit more self-confidence in a democratic mandate to believe that he has to be at the beck and hall and, and retort to any media tycoon and giant. But nonetheless, I mean, the Elon Musk stuff is nonsense. England is not uh, approaching civil war. It's approaching serious civil unrest. That, that gangs of uh, racist thugs can wander about the streets, apparently with impunity. The police are finding it extremely difficult to hold law and order across English towns and cities. It could be a long, hot summer. But of course, it's not a civil war. It's just a part of the an ugly side of society. What happens, perhaps, over a many years where people have been demonised and victimised and said they're to blame for the, the difficulties and shortcomings and lack of life opportunities of other sections of society. Uh, we are in the 15th year uh, of uh, effective recession, recession in terms of people's living standards, sometimes called austerity. Uh, and people's tempers are pretty short under these circumstances. But England is not on the brink of civil war. Uh, and the Prime Minister should not give credence to Elon Musk when he tries to do so, nor should we do anything to give credence to BBC Scotland, which twice this week, uh, and I don't listen to it that much, but on the radio, their flagship phone-in programme, almost were begging for people to tell us that this was about to happen in Scotland. I mean, I mean, listen, Nicole Kay, well, the least said about that, the better. But Stephen Jardin, normally, I think, a very responsible journalist, I, I listened to him actually saying, are you anxious? Are you frightened? Are you at home? Are you worried? It's dangerous complacency to think of Scottish exceptionalism. Well, Stephen, there haven't been riots in Scotland. In 2007, after the Glasgow airport attack, it wasn't the reaction of the Scottish community to turn on the, the Asian community of Scotland. In 2011, it wasn't the reaction of Scotland to, to riot in the streets when there was riots across the English cities. I was First Minister on both these occasions. Uh, it just didn't happen, and it hasn't happened yet. But people like yourself and people like BBC Scotland, if they have headlines saying that people are frightened to go forward from their houses, then there is a danger of copycat action because it's being pushed through the media at every possible channel. There are reasons why Scotland is different from England. It's a different nation. The most principal and most obvious reason is in Scotland that the national flag is proudly hoisted by our minority communities. In the referendum campaign of 10 years ago, one of the results that's never talked about is that Scotland's minority communities, the ethnic communities, voted by a bigger majority, by a majority in favour of independence. Unlike many of the what might be described by some people as the more indigenous communities. The national flag is not a source of division in Scotland, it's a source of unity, it's a source of strength, and therefore it's less easy to victimise minorities in our population. Not impossible, of course, and if you're festooned with, with coverage that you have seen over the last week from the English towns, and we get uh, the BBC telling us this is across the UK, or Sky, or any of the other People. There is a difficulty, a real difficulty, when the Prime Minister who's trying to quell the violence is standing under the same flag, the Union flag, as the rioters who are in the streets. It leads to a certain confusion about who stands for what in society. So rather than resent the fact that Scotland is different, that Scottish society is different, and without any complacency about racism in Scotland, why don't we just approach the matter with a calm authority Make it clear to people like uh, 
Tommy Lennon, or whatever his name is, if he wants to organise a, a march in Glasgow, then if people turn up, they'll be arrested by the police in a law and order issue, as these things should be done. It's just with uh, the effect of this, which makes it clear that uh, we've got enough of our own problems in Scotland without importing racist thuggery from elsewhere. And is it really too much to expect to have a media in Scotland which reports Scotland which doesn't want to merge us in with the, the worst aspect of other societies, and which just occasionally says there might be something good about this country, which is worth celebrating, because that's the attitude of every minority community I know, and it's why they're so much part of the fabric and tartan of Scottish society.